This video will cover the rules for naming and writing the formulas for ionic compounds. So let's start with a little bit of review about ionic compounds. Remember they contain both a metal and a nonmetal. So you have both metals and nonmetals present and your periodic table of course is the place to go to see where those are found. In an ionic compound, your electrons are actually transferring from one atom to another to form the ions that the name comes from. And each ionic compound is composed of a positive ion and a negative ion held together by electrostatic attraction to form an ionic bond. Now the ions that make up ionic compounds can have several different characteristics. Ions can be monoatomic, that means they're only composed of one atom. They can be polyatomic, of course meaning more than one atom. Ions can also be cations, which are positively charged, or anions, which are negatively charged. And then ions can always form the same charge. They always are a plus two or they always are a minus two, or some ions, some metals, can form more than one possible charge. And these are known as multivalent metals. And we have to consider them in kind of a separate category from our other ions. So when it comes to naming the ions, there are a couple rules you need to know. The cations, for monoatomic cations, or monoatomic one single atom and a positive charge, the name is formed by just taking the name of the element itself and adding the word ion after it. So our sodium plus down below, so it's a plus one. The ones are invisible for our charges, just like in algebra. So sodium plus one is a, called a sodium ion. For the multivalent metals, you put the charge in parentheses using Roman numerals So, in, in, when you come up with a name. So if you have iron that has a plus 3 charge, then you would write it as iron with a 3 in Roman numerals in parentheses, ion, iron 3, ion. Note that the charges for ions, sometimes you will see them as plus 3 and sometimes it's 3 plus. Um, that, just depends on who's making up the charts. So either way is the same. That means the same thing. For your negatively charged anions, monoatomic one atom anion, to make their name, you take the ending off the element name and add an "-ide", plus the word "-ion". You're not really taking, you're not always taking just the last syllable. Sometimes you're taking the last two syllables, and you just have to get familiar with what it is. So oxygen with a negative 2, and I can't, um, for some reason this one did not do a, a superscript. I'm not sure what's happening with my fonts here. But that's an oxide ion. So oxygen turns into oxide. In the polyatomic ions, I've given you a reference page, the poly periodic table of ions, and use that box of polyatomic ions on that sheet. I'm not asking you to memorize a bunch of polyatomic ions. So now you know how to name the ions, well how do you name the ionic compounds? So if you have a binary ionic compound, two ions, one positive and one negative, you take the name of the metal ion and the name of the nonmetal ion and put them together. You drop the word ion after it. So the rule is always the metal ion is going to be the element name, the nonmetal ion is going to have the ide at the end, so NaCl becomes sodium chloride, CaF2 becomes calcium fluoride, Al4C3 becomes aluminum carbide, so carbon turns into carbide, and MgO becomes magnesium oxide. The name of the binary ionic compounds, it doesn't give you any idea about how many of each element is in the compound. Sodium chloride, which only has one sodium and one chloride, the name sounds exactly the same as aluminum carbide, which has four aluminum atoms and three carbon atoms. What if you have more than one atom involved in your compound? You have a ternary ionic compound. Well, there you'll have a metal ion and the polyatomic ion name, and you put those two together. So NaC2H3O2 becomes sodium acetate. 
Notice that there's two ways to write acetate. Here we've kind of combined the carbons and hydrogens and oxygens and added them all together to, with subscripts. In your, on your periodic table, the ions, it's written over like this way where it's CH3COO. Um, in either case, they both are referring to acetate. And then magnesium sulfate. Sulfate is your polyatomic ion there, so SO4 is sulfate. Aluminum cyanide, CN is the cyanide polyatomic ion. And then calcium hydrogen carbonate. Hydrogen carbonate is the name of the polyatomic ion that is HCO3. So like with your binary compounds, you have the name for the first half of the um, formula and then the name of the ion in the second half of the formula. Ammonium is the one odd polyatomic ion that has a positive charge. Its formula is NH4, and it has a plus one charge. And it's just treated like an ordinary cation using the name ammonium. So NH4Cl is ammonium chloride, and NH4NO3, so this would be two polyatomic ions put together, actually. We have ammonium nitrate. This should be nitrate. Oh, that was the wrong word there. Sorry, nitrate. That I should be an A. Didn't catch my typo. Now, if you have a multivalent metal ion involved in your formula, it requires an extra step. And before I talk about that, I need to talk about how you write the formulas because that'll help you in naming multivalent compounds. The first thing you need to know in writing ionic formulas is that even though ions are charged, the ionic compounds, when you put them all together, are actually neutral. They have no charge. In order for the compounds to be neutral, the positive charged ion must cancel out the negative charged ion. An easy way to figure out the formula and get the correct number of ions is to use the number for the charge of the cation as the subscript for the anion and vice versa. So whatever the charge is for the cation, if it's a plus 3, then that becomes your subscript for the anion or the negative ion in the formula. And then you simplify the result to the lowest whole number ratio. So just like when you simplify fractions, you're going to simplify your ionic formulas. For example, lithium oxide, we know from the name that it contains lithium and oxide ions. Lithium is a plus 1, we see from checking our reference table, and oxygen is a minus 2. So we take this 2 from the oxygen and put it as the subscript in the lithium, and then the lithium plus is just a plus 1, so there'll be an invisible 1 next to the oxygen. So the formula becomes lithium, Li2O, lithium oxide. Mathematically, that means we've got 2 positive 1 ions and 1 negative 2 ions, and so that positive 2 plus a negative 2 is going to equal 0, and that makes your lithium oxide a neutral compound. So when it comes to writing formulas for ionic compounds, it's all about balancing the charges so that you end up with the positives canceling out the negatives. So you have to think about the charges when you're trying to figure out a multivalent metal compound because your multivalent metals are going to have a charge in parentheses in a Roman numeral following their name because multivalent metals can have one can have more than one possible charge. So you are setting them up exactly the same way where first you have a metal name of the the metal ion's name and then the nonmetal ion's name if it's a binary um compound, or if it's a ternary compound, you'll have the metal name and the polyatomic ion name. So that's not changing any of that formula. But you need to determine what charge is on the metal ion. And in order to do that, you want to look at what is the charge on the negative ion or the anion so that you know how much charge is being carried on that positive ion. And then again, you give that charge as a Roman numeral in parentheses after the name of the element that is your multivalent metal. So let's look at two examples to help make a little more sense. And somehow I've lost my circles on this page, too. I had circles around the uh, various parts of the table, and they've just disappeared. Um, I'm interesting, going from one program to another, what happens? So we have FeO. So you know that is an iron oxide, but we don't know what iron oxide it is, because if you look on the periodic table, iron could be a plus 3 or it could be a plus 2. How do we figure it out? Well, we have a one-to-one -one ratio of ions showing here, one 
iron and one oxygen. Or because iron can have a plus two or a plus three charge, we look at oxygen. The oxide ion has a negative two charge. So in order for you to have a one-to-one -one ratio, the iron must have a plus two charge because two to two is the same thing as one-to-one -one if you simplify it. So our name of this formula, FeO, is iron two oxide. Here's another example. Here's lead acetate. And um, this four should have been a subscript. I'm having all kinds of problems with my formatting today. Um, so there are four acetate ions and one lead ion. So we have a one to four ratio of ions. Lead can be a plus two or a plus four. And acetate is a negative one charge. We see from this table that little negative after that. So there's just a negative one. So in order for the um, in order to have, you have to have four acetates to balance out the one lead, this mean, must mean that you must have a plus four charge on your lead acetate. And just to use that little trick that I said with the subscripts being the opposite charge, that would put a four over here, a plus four on the lead, and we'd have a minus one on the acetate. So again, you can just look at the formula and calculate the charges as well. Remember though that they'll be in the lowest number ratio so you might have to do some adjusting up to make it equivalent. So you're always going to have your periodic table and the periodic table of ions as a reference but the more you can memorize on what the common charges are for the elements that we work with a lot, the easier it's going to be for you to name and to write compounds. So take the time to learn as many of these as you can. Uh, you'll get lots of practice, but really it just comes much more easily if some of this stuff is in your memory and you're not having to go back and look at the paper every single time when you're trying to write a formula or come up with a name.